Welcome back. Last year, the WTA finals were held at Dickey's Arena in Fort Worth, Texas. Everybody got cowboy boots, hats. Caroline Garcia rode off with the biggest title of her career. She beat Arena Sabalenka in the final for her fourth title of the season. But her prize money wasn't even half of what Ash Barty got when she won the WTA finals three years earlier. Take a look at this at the time that 4.42 million dollars was the single largest prize in tennis history past couple of years Muguruza Garcia have not come close to matching that as the WTA left China now where are they going this year for the WTA finals it still has not been announced and we're about two months away from the WTA final. Last year, we didn't find out about Fort Worth, Texas until six weeks before. John, you've been all over this story for Sports Illustrated. What is the very latest on where the WTA will hold its year-end championships? As we speak, there are WTA board meetings going on in New York, and it could be as soon as today that this gets voted on. I'm told that, that Saudi Arabia is not the only bid, but it is the leader in the clubhouse um, here. We, we see the, the WTA, I've been told already, has a crisis management firm on hand to dispense talking points. Uh, obviously, the, the Saudi bid will be controversial, especially, as you say, Steve, coming off of China, where, remember, the WTA left China on these on sort of ethical principle grounds. These values don't align with ours. It's potentially uh, problematic, at least in the eyes of some, to then end up in another authoritarian country with some human rights issues, but it does seem, I'm, I'm being told, it looks like Saudi Arabia is as good as done. It, what does it tell you, Chanda, if you have already hired a crisis management team before you've made a decision? Uh, it tells me you know this is going to be a bit of a tough sell and you want to do a bit of damage control ahead of time. You want to manage any of the negativity. And, and this is a tough one when you consider the WTA. It is uh, the organization for a premier sport for women. And its platform is based on equality and women's empowerment. And how do you justify going to a country where for so long that has not been the case for women? And things are changing. They're going in a positive direction. There are more rights um, that women are getting. Uh, and, you know, that's a positive. But is it enough uh, to justify holding such a big event, a crown jewel, really, um, in women's tennis in that in that country. Uh, that's the question for me, and there's a lot of things that I think have to be discussed. Players have to understand the ramifications and, and all of the different factors, and there's not a lot of time, you know, to get a handle mm -hmm. on it. I mean, that is, you mentioned two months away. It is crazy when you think about how quickly that can come and go, and it's just tough to kind of fathom where things will be and, and how all of this will shape out within that time frame. And the players are going to be the ones on the front lines answering the questions yeah. about going there if they do do that. And a couple legends of the tour, our own Martina Navratilova has spoken out against it. So it's hard to believe I'm getting crap for saying I would not go play in Saudi Arabia. Chris Everett tweeted, take less money, do the right thing. What do you think, Paul? You know, look, I think that's one of the biggest um, issues involved is that these players are going to be the folks on the front line that are going to have to deal with whatever the decision is. And, and most of the players... Um, have such little information about it. Look, I, I, it's a long time ago, but I was on the player council. I was on the player board of directors of the ATP. I understand the mechanics of how all that works, but the players are in front of the microphone all the time. So they're going to be answering a lot of hard questions that is going to be very difficult for them to answer. I think we only have such a small amount of information. The prize money, from what I understand, regardless of where the other options are, isn't going to be that much difference. We saw the big discrepancy from a few years back. I don't think it's going to be that big of a hit for the players. But what we don't know is all the other payments that go out to the organizations, to consultants, to all the other people that are getting um, some uh, remuneration for their skills, for what they do, and also what it costs to run the tour. So it's more than just a prize money issue. It's more than just a player issue. The players have the microphone, but there's so much involved. You talk about women's rights and also human rights is an issue there too. I mean, there's in general, there's a lot of things that have to be addressed. We saw what happened with the PGA Tour when they went through it. It is a really complex equation and the powers that be have an unbelievable amount of pressure to make a good decision. The biggest thing for me is how the heck do you do it the clock ticking this fast?
Right. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the time is running out on making a decision. What are the other options that the WTA has? What other cities are putting in bids, John? Yeah, there, there are other cities that have made bids. I'm told there's a bid from Mexico. There's a bid from Washington, D.C., which is less money up front, but is more of a share the risk, short share the reward. And there is a bid from Prague. Very intriguing. There are a lot of top players from the Czech Republic. It's a lot closer to the home bases of many of the eligible players. The one sticking point is that the Czech Republic, it's unclear whether they will allow athletes from Belarus and Russia. This is obviously in response to the Ukraine invasion, but can the WTA go to a country that doesn't necessarily allow everyone in the country? The flip side is Saudi Arabia, well documented what the human rights issues are. Homosexuality is, is criminalized there. We had, uh, you know, Daria Kazakina said she wished she played for the, the flag of the rainbow flag. So it's really a tight set. And I also think two months out, that does a lot to undercut your negotiating leverage. I mean, I think the, the host cities know that there's an element of desperation. But also, as you say, Chanda, who's going to go there and make sure that all the attire is going to be acceptable? Right? We had WWE was in Saudi Arabia and female wrestlers had to change their outfits. Who's going to make sure that players who are gay will be protected? With a few weeks away from the actual date, that's all going to be really a sticking point. Yeah, and you think about, you know, all of the different places that the WTA goes. And it's hard to get involved with the politics everywhere. I mean, there's no place that's perfect. But when you think about, you know, this situation in particular, and you know some of the sticking points, which are major obstacles, uh, but it's also about the money as well. It's also about, you know, prize money. It's also about the running of the tour. And you mentioned this, Paul. There's a lot that goes into running the tour over the course of the year. And the WTA Finals provides that money. I mean, for years when I was playing, the tour didn't have a big sponsor and they didn't make enough money um, from, the, from that event. And so it had to come out of players' prize money. That's not what players want to see now. They have that decision on the table uh, from that perspective. Uh, so it, there's a lot of different factors to consider. Consider. And again, you mentioned the clock is ticking. There is not a lot of time to do it and get a tournament organized on top of it. it you're, uh, this week, next week, a decision will be made? I'm told this week. This so week. We'll see. Okay. Yeah. We'll find out and uh, we will talk about whatever they decide for the WTA finals later this year.